Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the top 10 most legendary arc tames. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. In at number 10 we have got ourselves the Crystal Wyvern and this creature is here simply because, come on, it's the Crystal Wyvern. Compared to the normal Wyvern I find it is just a much better creature and it is so much better for me that I have to put it on the legendary creatures list. It's kind of a marvel, a miracle if you will, that this creature is actually in the game. A Wyvern and even a better version of the Wyvern that is significantly easier to tame than the normal Wyvern and also just generally a lot less hassle on servers as a lot less people tend to be on Crystal Isles than maps like Ragnarok. Ragnarok is actually the most popular arc map out there at least i'm still confident it is i'm not sure where fjorda is at but i'm pretty sure ragnarok is still the king also on top of that you might be saying well why have spawn on scorched earth well they're really just a pain on that map where it is on crystal isles with the crystal ivans you can simply just get the primal crystal you knock out one of these things and you can get the primal crystal from them and then it'd be level 60 passive tame them and boom there you go the personal favorite of mine is the blood crystal ivan i just really like the abilities that it has this is the tropical crystal ivan but a lot of you out there in the comments below have been saying you really love the ember crystal ivans and they definitely are a really good one as well and if you've never tried out crystal ivan before if you're anti-crystal ivan as well really try one out for yourself and if you've tried them loads and then you still hate them then that is the only excusable excuse for not liking these things continuing on we have got ourselves the snow owl this creature can be found all across extinction and i think it can also be found on fjorda as well and it really is one of those gold stars it gets a gold star from me if you will this creature is just so great in its density of abilities and it's just general use like pvp players can use this thing pve players can use it it's not very one-sided it's so versatile in all of its features namely it is a glider which means you can really rack up some serious speed with this thing it does definitely help yes managamas have a lot of speed on them but still you can actually gather quite a significant amount of it with a creature like this you're not really missing out too much they can't quite get to the same speeds but still there's a lot more control i find in a creature like this at least at my current skill level with flying managamas they also do kind of have a, a uv heat seeking it's not uv is it it's infrared it would be for heat either way they have a infrared heat seeking ability where they can see heat coming off of any organism and i'm not sure if just general hot things like lava show as well but that should just be pretty obvious anyway you can kind of use it like a night vision camera as well also if you level up stamina on these things not only can they fly longer distances but you can also heal up creatures with them which again is just going to make these things really nice to use it is ideal to have a creature that can heal others in this way like yes the daedon does definitely do a good job at healing creatures but i find the snow owl just has it better and also with uh, snow owl pellets being useful for gachas as well to get some insane loot out of them they really are so versatile and you should definitely use one of the things these things at some point considering just how easy they are to tame so a fan favorite of many at the moment and obviously just ever since release it's not really a trend thing this has always been at the top of many lists ever since it was launched i'm not actually sure when it's a 2023 creature it released at some point uh, in that time i think later on in the year but it could have been earlier on as well again my mind is really not the most up to date with things like this they just time goes by so fast doesn't it really and you look at back at all these things and you're like actually when was that either way the running Ganatha can be found on the island and also the lost island and i find on normal arc these creatures are quite rare whereas on asa they're a lot more abundant i don't know what it is is it just like how the spawns work or is it just some kind of placebo where i'm just like oh yeah more are definitely spawning when actually no more are spawning uh, i haven't really played much asa anyway so it's not that i've played more either way looking on it the running Ganatha is an extremely strong uh, tame which you can find in the swamp biome and it really is going to be extremely useful for that job not only because they can deal heavy amounts of damage but also they can pick up a large range of creatures as well and on top of it they're just heavily mobile flyers which are really capable they're really strong 
in what they do and although their tank method is pretty much just a rehashing of the reaper it's still a really cool one to walk through and now with the net gun and things like that this tame actually does become quite a breeze it's a lot harder especially if you go for the 100% effectiveness I find that not really to be the most useful on a creature like this that's just my personal preference though, but you know, you might think differently. Comment your thoughts down below. Are you a pro 100% effectiveness on running against us or against it? Because it seems to me a lot more effort than it's worth and they're really not that difficult to tame anyway. Just get yourself the highest level one that you can find and tame it. Uh, just normally you don't need the 100% effectiveness. If you have the resources at the time, then just go for it. You might as well. But you know, for me it's not really worth it because they're not really boss creatures and they still really do pack a punch no matter the effectiveness but it obviously does matter on the level. Some really low level ones tend to really lack in the health department. And at number seven, we have got ourselves at the Argentavis. This creature is here, as for me, it is just one of those kings. I can't live in Ark without an Argentavis in the map. Spawns all over the island and really is a popular one among many, including myself. It is so capable of gathering things like metal, crystal, and obsidian, especially considering it has weight reduction on them. Obviously, it's not going to be doing the gathering but it's going to be doing all of the heavy lifting and the carrying obviously you can pair it with nanki and a dodic and then you can gather all that metal crystal obsidian stone uh, thatch wood even depending on what creatures you're using so there's a lot of versatility you can get out of a creature like this also people do give them a bit of a, a bad hit sometimes for their slowness whereas actually i find they're not the slowest things out there and especially considering that you've got a very high stamina and very high weight stats they are a lot nicer to use than something like a pteranodon in my opinion yes they're not as fast but you don't have to take as many breaks especially if at the time you don't really have a very high level pteranodon because you tend to be taming lower level ones as they are kind of first flies in the game but obviously you will get some higher ones later on but still even with 150s i find they're a bit lackluster in the stamina and weight department still whereas the argies really aren't and you can really push with an argy on top of that as well, their Saddle does act as a portable smithy, which is just a really nice addition to have, and also a nice regen buff is gained if you kill something, or if you just eat any general dead corpse. Now, I'm sure you all did expect this creature to be on the list, and yes, we have got ourselves the Shadow Mane. This is just one of those creatures where it is so improved from something like the Thyla, it kind of seems a little bit mental why you'd still be using those apart from their climbing ability and also just general accessibility i'm not saying the thyla doesn't have any use anymore you can still definitely use it it is a great creature it's not like it's had all of its ability stripped from it but there's just less going for it now since this creature's been released and i know it's been released for a while but still you know it's the thyla has been around still for a lot longer than this thing it is fast agile can go invisible has the hydration buff deals tons of damage has natural armor and no saddle is required and although the tow method can be an absolute pain pretty much all of the time they are really nice to have and also they're pretty decent underwater as well which you might not expect but you also might expect considering their code name in the game is lionfish lion so you know they better be good at swimming and they definitely are really great boss creatures as well and just general all-rounders they've got the mobility they've got the damage they've got really everything going for them in a small carnivore in another five we have got the blood stalker and i put this creature here as i find it is so useful for doing any kind of like underwater exploration and i know you can get megalodons and moses and basilos and all those creatures to uh, be able to explore those underwater environments. But I find with a creature like this, this is the top tier one out there. I have found nothing better ever since I've started using it. Firstly, you can skim over the top of the water and also once in the water, it has an incredible amount of speed and you can see all the aggros of the creatures nearby as well. So it really does generally benefit you and i'm not sure if it has the kind of neutral mode as well i haven't actually used these things within the past week and my brain is failing me because i've had some other musicy stuff going on if you are wondering by the way either way these creatures incredibly great for underwater travel but also just incredibly great for normal travel as well they are so ideal for general travel as long as you have some kind of elevation in the area it's not going to work on just flat planes but they still do have a, a decent amount of speed in them walking although it can be a little bit of a drag and there's some better creatures out there just for walking across flat planes you can find some creatures which will 
vastly excel uh, compared to the Bloodstalker in that asset, but this has other uses. Also on top of that, they actually aren't the worst damage dealers out there. You definitely wouldn't be bringing these things into boss fights, I'm not even sure if they're allowed into boss fights, probably not considering their like grappling abilities all around. But they're not actually the worst damage dealers, and you can actually, if you get a high level one, deal some pretty decent damage to some enemies. You'd probably be surprised, actually. Now, I'm sure you expected the Desmodus to be on this list. Come on, it is the Desmodus after all. Probably my favourite, or second favourite glider, really, considering what's coming up next on the list. Although, that one does work quite differently, as it's technically not a flyer. And Although, this does have the gliding ability. It's still a flyer, but it, it glides in a way. The next one is just generally a glider. It's not the Rock Drake. The Rock Drake is... Sadly not on this list. Sorry, it's not a legendary tame for me. I know it's a really great creature, but still, you know, it's not quite for me. Whereas the Desmodus definitely is. You've got Sangria Elixir. It's an absolute cheat for tames. Obviously, that gliding ability is going to warrant you tons of speed, which is really nice. Then grip onto walls and vertical surfaces, just like a Tapijara. They're much better than a Tapijara, by the way. Much more worth your time as well. The exact same tame method as the Bloodstalker simply just get some blood bags and they will eat it out of your inventory and boom, Desmodus. They do also need a saddle as well, but that's fine. Also, you get additional armor with the saddle anyway, so it's usually a good thing to have a saddle than to not. Also, on top of this as well, they can go invisible and pick players off Riders too with absolute ease. In at number three, we have got ourselves the Maywing, and this creature really did have to be here for me. Come on, it is that cute Patipus Glider, which has an incredible amount of speed and incredible amount of use in the traveling aspects. They really are OP creatures for this, especially considering you can get them around the time that you'd be getting yourself a Raptor. They are some of the most OP creatures considering how early on you can get them in the game. And if you have access to them, I implore you, please get yourself some Maywings and start training on them and get good at flying them. They might seem a little bit difficult and a little bit clunky, a little bit quirky at first, but trust me, once you get used to them, you are never going to want to turn back from these things. They are the ideals and it's actually nice when you just transfer one onto your server in ASA. There's a, just a lot more that you can do on the island once you've got a Maywing on the map. Just traveling is so much easier. You thought Tyranodon was fast. Look at the Maywing. These things are absolute zoomers across the map. Not on the, uh, the generation standard though. That's a different thing. Either way, also uh, these things act as a portal feeding trough as well. Just great if you like your breeding. Also, these things can skim across the top of water, and they're pretty good barrier gatherers as well with that uh, cute belly flop of theirs. Really useful, great legendary tames. In at number two, we've got ourselves the Reaper. This creature has to be here for me. Come on, it's the Reaper. This invented that pretty weird and very, very innovative and interesting taming method that we all know and love from the Rhino Ganatha. Obviously, it's basically just a reskin of it but essentially this is the creature that started it and for me it is so much more legendary just taming a reaper for the first time is probably one of the coolest things that you can do in the game especially if you don't want aberration or gen 2 feels a little bit like a cheese because it's so easy unless you obviously still do it the normal way but still it just generally is easier because you've got flyers on that map and you've got gliders and all of those things I know you have the Rotrek on Operation, but still, you're very limited for traveling creatures on that map, and they're so deep down under in the depths that it really does add a lot of good sense of progression once you actually finally get one of these things. And even once you tame one, or once you're impregnated by a Reaper Queen, you still want to come all the way back up into safety, and it's just such a long endeavor, but such a fun one, and I definitely do implore you to do it. Once you've got one as well, you can deal tons of damage. You feel on top of the world, these creatures are definitely well worth it. Yes, you've got Gigas and Cockroachontosaurus, and they're legendary in their own way, but not as legendary as the 10 creatures on this list, and certainly not as legendary as the Reaper King. And finally, in at number one, we've got ourselves the Deinonychus. This always tops the list for me. I don't know what it is about this creature, but I do, obviously. It's, it's on here, in at number one spot, and I'm going to talk about why I love it so much, but it's so... It's so interesting how this creature has really gripped me as an ARC player. Firstly, they've got tons of speed and mobility. It's insane, actually, how much speed you can get on these things. And they take no full damage, which is just really great for me. I know you can just dismount just before you hit the ground, but you lose a little bit of immersion there because obviously you wouldn't 
really be able to do that in real life just the smoothness and fluidity of not having to do that really does benefit you and you can just absolutely tear creatures to shreds with the bleed ability especially considering that you can grip onto them and do this as well you can even do this to bosses which is insane you can tread through bosses so quickly especially considering these things also have the pack buff they really do have everything going for them apart from the hydration buff and underwater exploration but you don't really need that for this creature so yes maybe it's not the perfect all-rounder but there's no creature which really does build all the assets while you might say the shadow man does a similar thing it lacks in the bleed ability and it also does lack a climbing ability which the dynamicus has and it also lacks the uh, no fall damage and on top of that as well they can't deal the bleed damage obviously with the bleed ability which the dynamicus and the thyla can but the thyla isn't even allowed into bosses so we're gonna outrule that one completely so yes the dynamicus really is the most legendary creature for me very easy tames as well and so so worth it out of every creature in arc this is the one which i will be taming the most the top 10 most amazing arc tames in a number 10 we have got the uteranus and i'm putting this creature here because everyone really realistically does use the ut in a given boss battle scenario you'll use it with that uh, raw that it has it which essentially buffs your own creatures up and also they will take less damage It is called the courage raw and they also do have a fear raw as well Although that's not really commonly used as it does have a size limit But still if someone's trying to raid your base on a pteranodon you can actually use that fear raw and that player will lose complete control of the uh, Glider I mean flyer that they're riding or it could be a glider in the case if maybe they're on one of those smaller other gliders just some nice pvp tips for you people out there if you know you're in need of that because sometimes you might be in a scenario where you have a ut and you need to get a pteranodon away from your base with an enemy player on it just simply use that fear roll but i also find they're great general carnivores as well they have quite a lot of speed and mobility on them which you don't really get on a rex yes the rex is a great boss creature but still it doesn't really stand it's one of those amazing arctanes for me because it's not really as versatile and some people might forget about the ut apart from those other uh, that boss use of course that i've already mentioned because you really can get a lot out of this creature and it just people generally don't and that what i don't like about this creature or what i don't like the outlook on these creatures people don't really use it as much as they should in their uses that i think it really works in so continuing on we have got the crystal wyvern and this could be of any variety just whichever one you find preferable for me it is the blood crystal wyvern i know this there isn't a blood crystal wyvern here this is simply just a tropical one but i know a lot of you down in the comments have been really liking the ember crystal wyverns and i do definitely agree with that they are quite a nice wyvern to have and the reason why i say these are so much more amazing than just the regular old wyvern is i find there's a lot more variety and also just generally they have nicer special abilities yes breathing fire or lightning or poison or ice is still definitely something cool and useful but they're a lot more inventive with the crystal wyvern abilities and i find considering just how easy they are to tame compared to the normal wyvern it really is a no-brainer just to get these instead yes they are locked behind a kind of a level 60 barrier and you need to get that primal crystal so you need to knock out a crystal weapon first but i don't find that to be too much of an issue when taming these things I really don't struggle with it as much as uh, raiding a wyvern trench and yes you can do it with a field hawk and it's not the hardest thing in the world you can do it with the griffin relatively easily as well but then you've also got to go through the whole raising process and really it's a lot of time and effort you have to put into it especially on official whereas with these creatures yes maybe getting to the level 60 might be a little bit of a challenge but as soon as that passive tame is finished with that primal crystal you've got yourself one of these things and they really are just great flies to have is a hundred percent worth getting one so the snow owl i find often is very much used but also not often talked about in a way because I find that yes loads of people use this thing but they don't talk about it as much as they should just considering how great this creature is. As I might say well there's just simply better creatures out there and I will agree it's not the cream of the crop it's not the best art creature out there but it definitely is one of those most amazing ones in my opinion but obviously considering that we're only in the number eight spot there is still going to be a lot more to come with this creature namely they do have the dive bomb ability which you can also find on the desmodus and the griffin a terrific ability which i really do love as it va vastly increases the speed 
that a flyer can travel at even if they're just general coasting in terms of their their flying is not the fastest it, the rg had this ability it would be absolutely insane the rg is actually later on in the list by the way if you're wondering about that thing they also do have not the rg the snow owl in this case you can probably tell that already they have a heat seeking uv ability where you know you can spot out and scout out any creature just apply this to what you really think it would be and also they can heal any kind of creature as well that being your own creatures wild creatures or tamed ones it goes around full circle and also this is really useful as well if you're you're knocking out a wild creature and yeah its health is simply too low you've pumped so many tranks into it that its health is really low but also it's still not knocked out yet and sometimes you might get this on some wrecks as if they've been battling stuff before the health is already quite low and you start knocking them out and it really gets to a stage where you can't put any more tranks into them then simply use one of these things to heal them back up and you will not regret the benefits of this because then the torpor won't go down so much where you have to wait and also sometimes if you go out of render distance on single player this actually always happens on single player if you go out of render they're not going to keep healing up on servers you can maybe just log off and then log back on but so there's a little bit of inconvenience in that obviously you can also just heal up your own creatures as well in whatever situation that you might find yourself in but also the snow owl pellets can be used a lot uh, for getting great loot out of gachas i feel like i said also a lot on that but anyway continuing on with the list so in number seven we've got the reaper it feels a little bit weird to be putting this creature in at number seven but considering i don't really use it as much and yes it really fits into its map perfectly and all of that i kind of have to degrade it slightly where it is on the list because personally i am also factoring just generally how amazing these creatures are to use and how often i kind of use them as well yes i'm slightly shifting the words around a bit as you could say well this is amazing creature to tame and it's truly amazing because it deals loads of damage and it just really is a great creature to have but personally it's not one of my favorites in regard of just general use yes i use it tons on a map like arboration or on gen 2 as well i use it a fair bit considering they spawn on the map but i don't tend to transfer these across maps just to use one of these things i don't like them quite that much although there is really no better feeling than taming a reaper for the first time especially on operation because there is a long process in it and it would be a big shame to not include them on the list considering just how cool and amazing they look just how great they are as creatures they deal tons of damage they really do pack a lot of punch and they can travel quite far as well almost maybe as far as a Karkonos can throw some kind of dodo or literature so that's another pretty amazing creature as well although it is not making the list today but i guess it got a little brief honorable mention in this list the shadow man really did need to be talked about come on this creature is packed full of all kinds of abilities it does deserve to be here firstly it is an extremely mobile creature for its size and yes while the thyla does a similar sort of thing in a way it doesn't really compare to the amount of height that you can get out of this thing there is a serious amount of mobility withheld and yes it cannot climb any kind of wall or vertical surface once you see this jump in the b-roll here you will realize that you're never gonna need any of that it can really jump to insane heights and it's actually still a little bit crazy to me every time i do it because although these are amazing creatures i don't actually use these the most often i've kind of come off them a little bit recently but i've also kind of been coming off arc a bit recently i haven't really been playing a lot since uh asa came out really actually because i've kind of been pulled off because of the game a little bit they're also really great underwater tames though and they have the hydration buff they can go invisible they have the pack buff they're great for bosses and they have natural armor too the only real not amazing thing about them is just the horrible taming method which i will still never like to this day in at number five we've got the baryonyx this creature definitely does deserve to be here it is my all-time favorite caving creature and it really does have a lot going for it namely obviously that caving ability which basically means it is the perfect size to fit into any cave and with that size as well it also packs enough punch also don't mind about all the dead creatures that you're probably seeing around the map you'll see a dead uti 
later in this b-roll i heard someone wondering about that last time yes the b-rolls are recorded within quick succession and after i'm done with the b-roll the creatures do sadly die with a um a command which i'm pretty sure it's, it's just kill isn't it that's the a command you put in to kill creatures also on top of that as well these are really fast speedy creatures and they're great in the water too with that spin attack on the right click as well you can summon creatures up to the size of a megalodon which just generally makes them quite good for underwater caving as well they're already great just for regular caving but now for underwater caving too well they have been for a while ever since they released because they are just generally really great underwater tames some people don't really like them as much as they say they only really eat fish and fish is a bit of an annoying thing to get Cedar cants are absolutely everywhere if you know where to look for them. That really is not an issue which you should be running into. So the Desmodus is one of those creatures where it has to be on an amazing creatures list. Not only can it make Sanguine Elixir, which is an absolute feat for doing any kind of tames, essentially doing 30% of it for you with a click of a button. They are also blood bag farms and also you can just with that tame even more Desmoduses and also Bloodstalkers. And I'm going to give the Bloodstalker an honorable mention here as well as it really is truly an amazing creature for me. I just couldn't find a place to fit it on the list today so I didn't but personally I would say it deserves to be in the realms of the number 5 to number 3 spot and it really does in my opinion deserve to be here it's just there's some other creatures which I think deserve it slightly more and I put them there instead but I decided I'd talk about it a little bit because it's really just a great underwater mount and I love it so much it's generally a great travel mount it's really cool model design generally amazing creatures to use once you got over the learning curve controlling one they are fabulous now just a little brief thing to finish on the Desmodus, they are also gliders, they can grip onto any kind of wall, vertical service like the Tapujara, even just ceilings, and they can pick players off mounts with absolute ease for you PvP players out there. Now the RG has always been an all time favourite of mine, so I had to include it in at the number 3 spot on the list. This creature has driven me through many many years of arc, and at this point almost a decade, these creatures are just one of my favorites and although there are some slightly better creatures for travel and just with general amazingness in the rg they really do deserve to be on here for their massive contribution to my art playing over the years i always get so much nostalgia when riding an rg as well or just when watching videos of people on rgs and especially that old rg model yes will be a lot worse than the new one has a lot of nostalgia in it either way the rg is like the best metal carrier out there having weight reduction on things like metal crystal obsidian i'm pretty sure it's 50 percent although my numbers can be a little bit out to date sometimes because i'm not really playing a lot of arc at the moment like i have said ever since asa came out i've just been a, a little bit off put by arc in general but they can also pick up tons of creatures as well which really does play their benefit you pen them with anki and a dodic you can get loads of metal stone crystal obsidian all of those resources which you really do need they also have a smithy as a saddle so if you've ever done some caving which i like to do a lot then you can just repair your armor for those pesky ass players have got it or if any of your pikes or gear or swords or things like that have been broken you can easily repair them as long as you've got some metal ingots in the saddle of the rg because i don't like to go back to my base just to repair some armor because i usually do caves in quick succession and they also have a nice healing regen thing in at number two we have got the maywing and this is really the king of travel and it only just scrapes past the rg i was tempted to put the rg in at the number two spot because of just how amazing that creature is but the maywing is just so much more amazing at speed and ease of travel that it needs to be here as a lot of the uh, recent arc playing that i've done or the scarcity of recent arc playing that i've been doing has been just generally a lot of traveling and exploring maps i know it's not really the thing that you're going to be doing the most but traveling from a to b is definitely something which you're going to need to do in arc a lot and that this really is the best creature out there for it it's so quick so mobile so easy to use once you've just got over that first general learning curve and it can be used really on any map and it works just fantastically yes on aberration a rock drake is going to do better but they really don't need a lot of elevation to work like the rock drake does which is obviously why they're much more of a favorite when it comes to travel they can also skim across the top of the water they're pretty good swimmers as well they also are a portable feeding trough 
for you breeders out there and they're not the worst berry gatherers too so you've really got a lot of abilities in one and considering the saddle unlocks at level 18 it is really a no-brainer to put them in at the number two spot and at number one is the dinonychus and this always tops my list i don't know what it is for me but the right chair i do know what it is because i put it here i don't know why i've said that twice on some lists now but uh this creature is just so so good as a boss creature and so good as a general travel mount yes maybe not as great as the mailing i've been using the mailing a lot recently but i've still been using the dynamicus a lot just for land travel and a bit more uh, deeper and in-depth exploration instead of just flying around the map just like a madman they also can grapple onto creatures and deal tons of bleed damage to them which is obviously extremely useful especially in boss fights as it actually still does bleed damage to bosses which as far as i'm concerned no other art creature does they also have the pack wealth as well which again is going to boost them even more in boss fighting scenarios they really are the go-to for that unless you're on extinction then use a giga or a carcassonsaurus probably carcassonsaurus because their health is a lot more reliable as they do not have the rage buff again they're two great amazing creatures as well and the giga has really been through a lot with me and i guess i'll give it a brief honorable mention here as well because they really do just been this list somewhere except i just couldn't really find a place considering all the other creatures that i put on this list instead because I just find all of those to be more amazing to me. Also, the Dynamicus on top of this takes no fall damage whatsoever, and it can climb up any kind of wall or vertical surface like the Thyla can. Not quite as elegant as a solution, but I still really don't mind it whatsoever, and it works perfectly for me. This is the most amazing art creature out there, with no doubts. But anyway, that is the end of today's video. I really hope that you all have enjoyed, as I've definitely enjoyed making this one. As always, comment down below what is the most amazing art game to you, and if you didn't agree with this, put your 10 in the comments down below. And with that, I'll see you all later.